Hi, I'm Boxall. This is video four in a series of six designed to complement the NRSM 102 class for Montana range plants. The purpose of this video is to help all students with the grasses exam, which is probably one of the most difficult ones you're going to take. The best study tip I can give you is to lay the plant mounts down side by side and make comparisons so you can differentiate those grasses. So let's take a look at some of these side by side comparisons that should help you do better on the test. And I also want to thank the Montana State Teaching and Learning Committee for making these videos possible. So now in no particular order, I'm going to do what I suggested that you do while you're studying and that is to take plants that look similar, lay them side by side, and see if you can distinguish the characteristics that would help you identify them in, a, in an exam. So what we're going to start with is the most common mistakes that students have made over the years in misidentifying grasses on this test. And one of the mistakes they typically make is calling green needle grass blue bunch wheat grass or blue bunch wheat grass green needle grass. So green needle grass remember has one floret per spikelet and has a twice bent on. Blue bunch wheat grass has a spike inflorescence. In other words these spikelets are attached to the main stem that's not like um, green needle grass and the ons are bent over in an arc and one on goes in this direction and one on goes in that direction so it's not twice bent over so it's got multiple spikelets per floret whose ons are bent in divergent angles you know one direction and the other and this one has a single floret per spikelet so this is green needle grass and this is blue bunch wheatgrass the bromes are another area that people get confused on and often miss on an exam and the biggest mistake is calling mountain brome smooth brome or smooth brome mountain brome. So uh, over here we have smooth brome which has a world panicle. It has an M or W in the leaf. They both have this but smooth brome has a rhizome. This is mountain brome. Mountain brome has much larger inflorescence, in other words more spikelets per floret. Oftentimes they have very small ons in them which smooth brome does not. It's often hairier in the inflorescence and the number one feature for mountain brome is that it has a hairy base and it has no rhizomes. So that's how you distinguish mountain brome from smooth brome. Two plants that people get confused are buffalo grass and blue grama and they often grow right together. They're hard to distinguish when they just have leaves on them. But when they have an inflorescence they're fairly easy. If you look at blue grama it has this eyelash that's a one-sided raceme with multiple spikelets per floret. Big and long. And the leaves are basal, very similar to buffalo grass. Now let's look at buffalo grass. First of all, it's got, this is a male plant of course, so it's dioecious, which means it has male and female parts. But the male part often looks like blue grama, except the the inflorescence is much more uh, is much shorter, and it's usually in twins, or in other words, there's a pair of these little flags. And notice how this inflorescence is a lot shorter than blue grama. But the other most distinguishing feature is the presence of a stolon. It's the only grass we have on the exam that has a stolon. So if you're looking at the plant and you see an above ground stem called a stolon, it has to be buffalo grass. So this is Sandberg's blue grass 
and this is Kentucky bluegrass. Many students confuse these on an exam. Let's start with Sandberg's. Sandberg has more erect inflorescence, in other words it doesn't look like a pyramid. It also has a ligule present and it's also got a world panicle and a railroad tracks in the leaves just like Kentucky. But let's go over here to Kentucky and remember a couple distinguishing features. The florets are smaller but it has more florets per spikelet. Okay, so it's they're smaller but there's a bunch of bunch of spikelets in there. It has more of a pyramid shape, in other words it's more open and broader. And the number one feature on this bluegrass, Kentucky bluegrass, is that it has rhizomes. And Poa secunda or Sandberg's bluegrass does not have rhizomes. So here we have three grasses that have spike inflorescence. Two of them are wheat grasses and one of them is Canada wild rye. Let's start with crested wheatgrass. The best distinguishing feature on crested wheatgrass is the spike inflorescence with very strong V's or students say they look like a fish skeleton. Then let's go over here to western wheatgrass which also has a spike inflorescence but it has a very strong rhizome. So if you have a spike and a rhizome on this exam it has to be western wheatgrass. And the third grass that often people confuse with the other two would be Canada wild rye. But if you look at the inflorescence it's much larger, much thicker, and it doesn't just have a single uh, floret in here, it's more of a, each one of the the spikelets is thicker and it has awns in it and the entire inflorescence is much thicker and much larger. The last two plants we have and probably the hardest two to distinguish on the exam is Idaho fescue which is on this side and rough fescue over here. So let's go over the characteristics one more time to make sure you can tell these two apart on an exam. If we start with the inflorescence, Idaho fescue has much narrower spikelets. It, it has very small awns are present and they're very strongly V-shaped. The leaves are fine and enrolled and found on the base of the plant and the nodes are discolored. So the number one thing I look for in distinguishing these two is v strongly V-shaped, that tells you it's a, and a world panicle, that tells you it's a fescue. If it's got awns in it, very small ones, and discolored joints, it's probably Idaho fescue. The rough fescue has leaves that are much longer, so it goes farther up the stem on the inflorescence it's got more florets per spikelet so they're thicker. That is a good feature and typically out in the field it would have a purplish base and the leaves are much longer and the nodes are usually not nearly as discolored as those of Idaho fescue.